Next up, we have Robert Swan. Rob has always played around with words and rhymes, but only started reciting to others in this Larkin project. Rob's poems are always a work in progress, and he constantly looks to tweak the words in them, sometimes after years. Even the ones he labels temporarily as done. Yeah, that was, there was a, supposed to be a comma there, actually. His writing <laughs> is about his worries and his joys. The sun is always rising, but there seems to be just the odd few clouds getting in the way. Rob Swan. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to take through a little story. Uh, a group of poets go for a, a holiday in the North Yorkshire Moors that hire a minivan and they hire, uh, they rent a cottage out there. And they're actually hoping for uh, inspiration for future poetry. After four days, nothing's happened. No one's got any ideas. So, late one night, one of the poets decides that they should go for a midnight drive in the minivan. But he needs to find some sort of way to encourage the others to get out of the cosy cottage and go for a little drive. And this is called Bite Feel, and this is the poem that he uses. I'm not the punctual can, but tonight I'm in time to feed you a ram that bites. It bites your head, it bites your heart, it remakes the template from the start. It bites your arms, it bites your ass, it bites you back from the past. It melts the dye from which you're cast and whisks it up inside a flask. Taking your weaknesses to task, it breaks you through the ceiling of glass. To dance around and gaze down at every top table in town. To find that thing that you can do, to make your mark and bite it through. This rhymes my teeth that bite for you. To tempt your taste, to make you chew. Thank you. They set off on this little journey, this, does, this poem does, believe it or not, manage to convince them to go. And uh, as they're driving, the dark shadows of the night are appearing through the window, and one of the poets begins to get inspired. And he starts thinking of the uh, dark days of the last Labour government, and um, the winter leading up to last Christmas. And he comes up with this poem, which is England 2009. In a country stable, but unstable, crumbling but locked down. Inside, those that make up the beast benefit from its apparent confinement. Well groomed and watching all, as those that serve the beast take shadow, uh, sorry, take shelter below the shadow of its jagged, as it, of its control protection. Paid well to preserve, to maintain, to continue to ignore. Those selected to satisfy carefully positioned. Addictive materialism provides its perimeter. Needs that fake contentment, that mimic satisfaction, that cancel stubborn compassion. And all under the beast, hoping never to reflect in the depth of its clinical eye. All collected, all numbered and pinned. All ready for silent internal examination. The beast become butcher, eating us all and demanding more. Eating us all and demanding more. Thank you. <laughs> they continue on this little journey through the night, and sure enough, they come to a road accident. Nothing too serious. Uh, one police car, one ambulance, a couple of cuts and grazes, but the cars look really mashed up. One of the poets is looking across the road at the scene and um, in the bushes he thinks he sees a shadowy figure and it's a shroud and he's convinced the face is a skull and it's the grim reaper. He comes up with this poem. Hello death, I've got no fears. The way you look, I'm in tears. Your slimy green bones attempting to scare make wide-eyed mortals freeze and stare. But I'll just snigger as you swing your scythe, move along, maggot breath, I'm alive. <laughs> Thank you. 